What's going on everybody, it's Carmine from Barmine Tech and today we're going to be working with Open Media Vault to make your own NAS. So Open Media Vault is a project that is set up to make your own NAS. It also has availability to add on additional plugins. So if you want to set up like a VPN or, or a bunch of other ones, you can do so. We're going to focus on the base setup of Open Media Vault today. I'm going to be doing it in Proxmox just because that's the environment that I have up and ready to run it with. But you could do this on a standalone machine. You could do it on a virtual machine. There's a lot of possibilities. I'm just using Proxmox because it's going to be a little bit easier for me to build this out. Open Media Vault is a great tool to make a network share at its base. It's, it uses very little resources. So if you're really just looking to make a network share, Open Media Vault's a great option compared to TrueNAS or Unraid or maybe any of the other network share OSs that have all these additional features to them. This isn't a comparison video today, so this is just going to be going over how to set up Open Media Vault. So let's get right into that. Start off, we're just going to come over to Open Media Vault's site. And like I said, this is a project that I've worked with in the past. I actually ran my first network share for Plex off of this, and I have ran it as a VM on my machine. The website's pretty bare. We have their update log, so you can see anything that's been fixed. They have some. Uh, features some plugins that you can go take a look so you can see some of the stuff that's available and then we just have some screenshots to see what open media vault looks like other than that they have a blog and they have a form that you could read through if you want and then other than that we're going to come over to download so i want to get the iso image i want to get the stable so i'm actually just going to copy the link to download i'm going to come back over to my proxmox i'm just going to download the iso over here of course, if you're doing this on like a bare bones box, you can actually just download it straight from here and then you could use something like a uh, Belina Etcher or Rufus and you could burn it over to a USB drive. Or if you have like a Jet KVM or a Pi KVM, you could put the ISO on there. And when you boot up that, that physical machine, you can install it that way. Um, like I said, we're going to be working with Proxmox. So once this downloads, we'll be right back and then we'll get ready with the install. While this downloads, actually, we'll come over here and under resources over here, it has documentation. For some reason, they don't have it up here on the top ribbon, which is fine. And we have the documentation so we can just take a look through some of the stuff we might need. So if we want to look at hardware requirements, we can see what it requires. So for drive, it's going to say one at minimal, two at best, and it's going to say what it recommends. For memory, you're going to need at least 1 gig or 4 gigs to be optimal. If you want to use Wi-Fi or Ethernet, that works, as long as you have a 10 megabit NIC. I think everybody's pretty much going to have that, since fast Ethernet was the oldest standard that I remember using. As for a CPU, it just wants at least a 64-bit or 32-bit if you want to, but I don't think really anybody's running 32-bit anymore. Then wants a Intel dual core or a simple AMD Ryzen. So as long as you can give it a couple cores, a few gigs of RAM, you should be all set. They go into more detail about their hardware requirements over here if you're interested in reading through. But pretty much Open Media Vault is a really lightweight system. So as long as you can give it a couple gigs of RAM and a core of CPU, you should be all set. If you have more to spare, even better. But it shouldn't really use too many resources, so you really should be all set. Other than that, you're just going to need a drive for your storage. So however big you think your network share is going to be is how big you're going to want to make that drive. And then you can start building it out. So this just finished downloading my ISO. So I'm going to start building out my VM. Like I said, if you're building it in Proxmox, you can tag along. If you're not, you could skip ahead to when I actually get to the actual install. So I'm just going to come over here. I'm working on the bar my tech server today. I'm going to create a VM. I'm going to call it OMV for Open Media Vault. I'm going to click Next. And then I'm just going to select the ISO image. You can see I actually have two, so I'm going to select the most recent one. I'm going to click Next. I'm just going to leave all this default. Now this is going to be for my boot drive. So for my boot drive, I'm going to give it 50 gigs. I think that's more than enough, but I'd rather have extra. And now I'm going to add the second drive for the actual storage to use for the network share. So I'm just going to click Add. And then over here, I can add an additional 150, let's say. And I will click next again. Now it's just going to ask me about what CPU I want to give it. I'm going to give it two cores, and I'm just going to give it the basic one, which is fine. Memory, I'll give it two cores as well. And I don't need to change anything with my networking. And that should really be about it for setting up the VM. It, it, like I said, it's really simple. It's a very lightweight machine, so you don't have to really go too crazy. 
Now, if you do and you have the extra resources that you want to spare, you can. You could give it as much as you want. Maybe you're going to run a lot of services off of it. So you could do it that way. I'm going to open up a console for this and we're going to power it up and we're going to start going through the installer process. And you can see over here we're going to get the install options. I'm going to do install, so I'm just going to press enter. And hopefully this will be able to get, oh, there we go, it gets a little bit bigger. Now it's just going to ask for my language. It's going to ask for my country so we can pull the time zone. My keyboard I want to use. And now it's just going to start doing the install. So now it's just going to go through the install, and when we get to the next set of menus, we'll be back. So our next option is going to be what we want to call the host. I'm good with keeping it open media vaults. If you want to change it to anything particular, you can. Hit tab, get over to continue, and hit next. If you're running a domain, you can change it. I'm not, so I'm just going to leave it local. And now we're going to set our root password. So make sure that you remember this because it's going to be important. So you can log in, hit continue re-enter the password to verify and now it's just going to ask for my time zone so i'm going to do eastern and then we should be almost done it might have to go through a little bit more of an install now it's going to tell me that there's more than one partition that's fine because that's because i added the secondary disk so we're going to click continue now it's going to ask us which partition we want to use so i want to use the smaller one because that's going to be where i want the os to live so you can see it's going to be a little off remember i gave it 50 gigs and 150 i think it was so it's a little off and that's just because of how QEMU sees it. So I'm just going to click enter. And now it's going to install on that main hard disk that I gave it for the OS. So I'm just going to give this some more time to install and we'll be back. So now we're just going to come over here and the next menu is asking us so we can locate the best Debian mirror to use. So it's just asking for your country again. So I'm just going to use United States and I'm just going to use the first one that comes up. I don't use a proxy so I'm just going to click continue. And now it's going to keep continuing to pull the files it needs to do the install. And again, we'll be back when we get to the next set of menus. All right. And after all that, it's going to say the installation is complete. And now we can reboot the system. So I'm going to click continue. And it looks like it's just doing some final updates and getting some of the system ready. And we should be all set to pretty much get going now. So it looks like it's going to reboot and it should be able to boot right in so you can see over here it's going to get ready to boot into debian i'm going to let it go it's going to do it automatically we're going to get the welcome to grub so it's booting into the os and here we go now we're all set up and you can actually see that we have our ip up here so we can just go over to there and we should be able to log right in and as long as everything worked you should get to this page when you go over to the ip to sign in for the first time it's going to be admin and the password is going to be open media vault so the password is going to be different than the root one that we set. The root one is going to be if you need to log into the shell over here. So you can see I just logged in with root and that password that I set, and that's how I was able to log in to the shell. I know it might be a little confusing at first, but we are going to have different passwords for the web UI and the shell. So we can see over here it just has the uh, welcome message. And if you want to support the project, you can here. I'm just going to close this out for now. And the first thing I want to do is come over to user settings, and I want to change the password. So I'm just going to come over here and make the password something easier for the admin account. I'm going to click save. I want to save that in my browser. And now we're all set. Now we can actually start working with it. So if we come over to the dashboard, you can see there's no information yet because there's nothing going on. Over here on the left is where we have pretty much all the utilities. So we have dashboard, system, network, storage, services, users, and diagnostics system over here is going to show some of the different stuff so if you need to get like updates you could do that over here and you can see that there definitely is some updates that i need to run if we come back you can see there's plugins there's date and time so you can make sure that your date and time is right there's notifications you can configure how you want those if you're using a certificate you can set that in here nothing too crazy you're going to be using in here what we're going to really be using is storage so we want to come over here and we clicked on disks so let's come back. You can see I have disks, smart file system, share folders. The first one we need to do is disk. And over here, we can see we have dev slash SDA slash SDB. This is the ISO showing in the drive. You can actually remove that later on if you want. So you can see SDB this is the 150 gigabyte drive. So I actually want to use that. So you can see when you click on stuff, it highlights it yellow. So what we're going to want to do is we're going to want to wipe it and we're going to make sure that everything's clean. If you're using a physical machine, 
and you are using an older drive, make sure that there's no data on that drive that you might need. So you can, you know, make sure you don't lose anything. And if you notice, when I click to format the drive, I did quick. So there's two options. There's quick or secure. Secure is going to take much longer. I think it just does it in a little bit more of a, a safer method where the quick one is just going to wipe everything to make sure it's clean. I'm just going to wipe the drive just to make sure everything's good. There's nothing partitioned from how Proxmox set it up. And then we can start setting up our file system. And you can see when we get end of line means we're all done and we can click close. So now we're all set and we can start making our file system. So it's a little strange how they do it. So you need to take a disk, you need to make a file system to it, and then you can make your shared folder. It's a couple extra steps compared to how some of the other OSs do it. But once you kind of understand that process, it makes sense. So over here, I just clicked file systems. And now you can see we have some options so we can mount an existing file system, we can create one. And we don't have any existing ones yet, so we can't change anything. So I'm going to click create. I'm going to do ext4. And now we should be able to select our drive. So you can see over here it's popping up. I can click save. And now it's going to create a file system on that drive that I entered to use for my storage. So this is just going to write the ext4 settings onto it. And it should be all done in a minute or so. And here you go, we can see end of line. So I'm going to click close. Now you can see it moved me right over to file system. And now over here, I can select that drive again. And if you want to put a note, whatever it is, and then you can see they give you a threshold usage warning. So it's going to start sending notifications when the drive gets to over 85% used. So I'm just going to click save. Now we have a file system. So now you can see we have this big yellow box and we have pending changes. That's okay. So this is how Open Media Vault tells you to make sure you save everything. And as you make changes, make sure it's what you want. So you can come over here and you can show the details of what you're doing. You can undo them if you don't, and then you can click apply if you do. So I'm just going to click apply. Anytime you really make changes in Open Media Vault, this is going to come up. So just make sure that you get this, you know, you don't miss it because then it's not going to apply your settings. I'm just going to wait for this to finish up and then we'll continue on with the setup. All right. So now over here, you can see that we have our file system. So now that we have our file system made, we can move over to actually making our shared folder. So this is what's going to make it that we can actually share the drive across the network. And we're going to make a share by doing that. So we're going to come over here to shared folders on the left. We're going to click create and now we can name it. So I'm just going to call it share. You can name it whatever you'd like. Now we're just going to select our file system. So since that 150 gig drive that I set up is set up as a share, I could select it. This would be the relative path. And now under here, we're just going to change this to everyone read, write just to limit any permissions issues. I'm going to click save. Now over here, you can see we have a shared folder and here's that pop up to confirm the changes. I'm going to click yes. I'm going to apply these changes really quick. Now you can see they applied and this will go away in a second. And now here we are. So here's another cool thing is that it actually shows the absolute path. So if you're going to mount this on like a Linux machine, maybe, and you need it for F stab, here's your UUID that you could use in F stab to mount it. So a little tip, if it's something that you're interested in doing. So now we're almost all set to actually access this drive. And the only thing we need to do is come over here to services. So we're going to use SMB because that's most commonly used. And I'm going to just click over here. I'm going to click share. We're going to select the share. I'm going to select my share one more time. And now over here, I'm just going to say guest allowed. So if you're signing in on a Windows PC or a Linux machine, you can sign in usually a little bit easier. It's browsable. And I'm going to add a recycle bin because I like to have one. If anything else in here you see that you might want to put in, you can. Other than that, this is all I'm going to set. I'm going to click save. I'm going to apply one more time. And now one more thing that I want to do is I'm going to come back over here to SMB and I'm just going to make sure that this is all enabled. And I believe we should be all good. So I'm just going to cancel. And now we should be all set to whack whack over to the drive. So if I open up run, you can see over here, I could do that. I'm going to do share. Uh, I need to spell share, right? And I'm able to whack whack over to it. And if I click create new, I have write permissions. So I can come over here and I can actually write a folder to it or I can write a, a file. Here's a, a text document so I can actually write over to my share. So now we're pretty much all set for the basic stuff. I can close this out and go back to services. 
If you're interested in enabling SSH, you can do it through there. But like I said, if you're interested, you can set that up. I'm not going to really mess with this because I don't really need SSH right now. Other than that, I can minimize this. We can come over to users and we can make some new users and groups if we need. So you can see like I was messing with one before. I gave myself a bunch of admin roles and you can make your groups or users as you need. And over here you can make groups so you can make like a, uh, a viewers group so you can make it so certain people can access the share. Or maybe you're going to use this for services and you want to kind of make service groups so you can limit who accesses what. If you have multiple shares maybe, you can do all that in here. But other than that, that's pretty much the basic config. The next thing we probably want to do is update over here. So like I said earlier, I definitely have a bunch of updates. So I'm definitely going to want to take care of that. And I would do that over here. You could just do install updates and make sure everything's up to date. And then one other thing I want to talk about is they do have a ton of plugins. So if you are interested in going through here, you can do that. You could read through here or maybe if you want to check out some sources online. Like here's a nut plugin for network UPS tools. So if you want to monitor your UPS through here, you could do so. Looks like there's some sort of OneDrive uh, storage that you can share between your, your NAS and OneDrive. I mean, you could definitely take a look in here and see what interests you. I'm not going to mess with plugins right now, but it is possible. And you can come over here and it's pretty simple. I believe you just got to come over here, click on it, and then you can just install it right there. But like I said, I'm not going to really mess with plugins right now. But that's pretty much the basics of Open Media Vault. Like I said over here, you can access your share and you can go onto whatever PC and access it that way. And it's it's really useful, you know, if you have multiple servers or maybe a bunch of workstations around the house that you want to be able to access. So that's Open Media Vault. Like I said, I like Open Media Vault because it's a really lightweight OS to run. It doesn't have a lot of hardware requirements, which really makes it nice to run, especially if you want to use it on like a virtual machine. I'm running on a basic Proxmox server that doesn't really have high spec. So it, it's, you know, it's simple to run. It doesn't have a lot of requirements and you know, it just run, it works. I actually used open media vault as my first network share when I started my Plex server about three years ago, and it really worked really well. Comparing to some of the other OSs, this one is, you know, like I said, it, it doesn't have the requirements that some of the other ones do hardware wise. So if you don't have a, a higher end server or a lot of hardware available, Open Media Vault could be a really good option and it's a free license to use. But that's pretty much everything I have to say about Open Media Vault. I want to thank you all for watching. As always, I'll have all the links to all the gear in my home lab down below if you're interested in checking it out. I have a link to my merch store if you ever want to check it out and get yourself a t shirt or a hoodie or something like that. And I'll have a link down to the Discord server if you're interested and you want to join up. Other than that, I want to thank you all for watching, and as my buddy Don would say, hack till it hurts.